Being a dad isn't always easy, but it's the best thing I ever did. I'm constantly improving myself to be the best dad I can be through fitness, nutrition, mindset, and lifestyle. As fathers, we pass on many things to our children, such as our mindset, our habits, our attitude, and what we've learned along the way. Each of these will shape who our children are and who they will become. The Warrior Dad's mission is to help you become the healthiest version of yourself, to hone your edge, and to live with purpose. My name is Jim Bartomey, and this is the Warrior Dads Podcast. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode of the Warrior Dads Podcast. Today I'm talking with Chris Hughes, um, who is listed online as the Driven Dad. And uh, Chris is a father of three kids. He served in the U.S. Air Force from 2008 to 2012, and that is where he developed his passion for fitness. After the military, Chris got certified as a personal trainer through NASM or NASM and began helping others take control of their health and fitness. When Chris became a dad in 2012, he knew that he wanted to set a better example, and that is when he truly gained his passion for pairing fatherhood and fitness. And Chris is committed to helping men improve their health, fitness, and ultimately their life so they can maximize their roles as husbands, fathers, and men. So I'm really honored to have Chris on the show. Chris, thanks so much for hopping on with me today. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, so I love, I love what you have going on. I love your, uh, pictures that you have that you post on, on Instagram. They're very, uh, Jocko esque (laughs) with the, some of the, some of the watch that you have at four o'clock in the morning, four 30 in the morning. Uh, yes, sir. I think you're up even a little earlier than he is sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's behind, he's behind me in time zone, so luckily I do beat him most days. But, uh, <laughs> that yeah, he's over in Cali, right? Yep. Um. So yeah. So I want to I want to kind of dive right into this, but I, you know, I know we're going we're going to talk about health and fitness today, right? And I know you have a lot to share, but I wanted to point out something that I read on your bio that I thought was really powerful, and you know that you and I talked about right before, is that you said as a kid, no one in your family made health a priority and that it actually caught up to them because they suffered from a lot of different health issues. You know, as, as you say, as a poor, as a result of poor nutrition, lifestyle habits, lack of exercise. And you say your dad, uh, almost didn't survive a heart attack that he had when he was 50 years old. So I thought that was really powerful to share with people because, you know, as you're going to be offering all of these different tips and things like that and, and sharing what you do, you didn't come from a family that this was normal for right? You didn't come from a family that was active and that ate good. And this just came really easy to you because it's what you knew, right? That's right. I mean, I uh, actually didn't meet my dad until I was seven. I was born to a single mom uh, who was 15. And, you know, so we grew up on welfare in, in inner city Cleveland. Um, and growing up in the inner city, you know, uh, people tend to have poor nutritional habits, poor lifestyle habits. So uh, many individuals in my whole family, you know, women and men, uh, had bo- uh, poor nutrition, uh, you know, regularly smoked, regularly drank, abused medications, you know, even some drugs, depending on the individual. Um, and as you mentioned, like, you know, obesity and, and lifestyle issues uh, related to that, those, those choices uh, are something I saw regularly. You know, even my own dad, as you mentioned, they had a heart attack at 50. Uh, and that came after, you know, years of drinking and smoking regularly and not taking care of himself. And that just kind of solidified, uh, you know, a, a wake up call to me, you know, not that I, uh, was that bad, but you know that I didn't want to live a life like that, and I wanted to have a life of uh, health and vitality. Yeah. So we we mentioned that you were in the Air Force, right? And we know what how physically demanding the military can be, right? So what was what were you like before the military? During the military, were you always like you said you weren't that bad, but when did your fitness journey really start? When did you really start taking care of yourself? Like, were you in decent shape before you went into the military and then got in even better shape in and, and throughout? Or how did that start? Uh, no, not actually not at all. Um, you know, I always laugh when people say, oh, you've always been muscular or whatever, whatever the case is. You know, I graduated high school, maybe 130 pounds. Um, you know, I drank uh, with my friends quite a bit. You know, I smoked on and off. Uh, and then going into the military, I, you know, I started trying to run a little bit and things like that. Um, but even going into the Air Force, honestly, uh, to full disclosure, uh, they're not uh, physically demanding as I, at a, as I had hoped. But when I got into the military, that's where I just kind of got access to a base gym. You know, like I said, I didn't have the funds growing up to do that kind of stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I wasn't around individuals who pushed me in that direction. But when I joined the military, I made some friends who were in the fitness and, and I found myself at the base gym quite a bit, you know, exercising and uh, starting to run more, lift weights. And I just, you know, I really, I really started to take a, a passion to it. But initially, you know, it was just uh, looking to get better, get in better shape, you know, get the attention from the opposite sex or whatever the case was. Um, but as I matured and kind of uh, grew up and then eventually, you know, had kids of my own, I realized that, uh, you know, being, being healthy is far more than just looking good in the mirror or, you know, trying to catch someone's attention. There's, there's far more to it than that. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what became your driving motivation then? I mean, did, did the, did the heart attack from your dad at the age of 50, which is still pretty young, did that have anything to do with it? I know you said you weren't very close with them, but I mean, there's still some genetics there too. So was there any of that kind of motivating? Uh, definitely. You know, definitely. As I looked around at, at my family members, you know, like I said, he had the heart attack. That was actually not too long ago, only a couple of years ago. But, you know, my grandfather uh, was always very heavy. He ended up having like gastric bypass surgery. Uh, the women in my family were very heavy as well. And I saw that those individuals always were dealing with, you know, illnesses and sicknesses and limitations in what they physically could do. And I just didn't want to be like that. You know, not only did I not want to be heavy or out of shape in that sense, but I also didn't want to be weak and skinny and, uh, you know, just I was more naturally a uh, frail build and I didn't want to live like that either. I wanted to be strong and capable. Um, you know, so when I had kids, that's what kind of pushed me in that direction to want to, you know, put myself in a position to live life to the fullest with them. Um, so I had to be strong and, and physically fit to do that. Yeah. See, it's, I, I like what you were saying too about, you know, how you're seeing the people in the family and you're kind of moving away from what you didn't want to happen. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's really powerful too. I actually tell my clients and I encourage them. It's like, if you can't figure out what you want, then figure out what you don't want. Right. Yeah. And then in the process of moving away from that, then, you know, have an end goal in sight. Then you, I mean, you still have to figure out where you're going. Right. So you so you know what it looks like when you get there. Um, so obviously you clearly have that, especially now um, being a father of three and congratulations on, on the new, the newborn. I appreciate that. Uh, but you're also moving away towards what you didn't want because you're having this example or you're seeing this example from before, from earlier on, and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to end up like that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of folks get caught up on the idea that like, oh, I didn't have a good example of X, Y, Z, you know, well, sometimes in my experience, like the bad examples or, you know, examples that you don't admire or don't want to be like can make the best example because it shows you what you don't want to do or don't, how you don't want to be. Um, so, you know, you can learn just as much from that as you can from someone that's like a stellar, you know, pillar of, of what exactly you want to be yourself. Absolutely. I like that. I've heard that from some other people too. And I just think that's really powerful. And it's a, such a great way to put a positive spin on something that could be, you know, originally negative in nature, Yeah. you know, or at least perceived as negative, right? Because if you're, if you're turning it into a positive, then it's, you know, maybe not necessarily even negative in itself. So, um, awesome. So I know, I know your passion is helping dads with their health and fitness. So in your opinion, I want to, I want to get this from you. What's the main piece that's lacking in the dad community or the, in the dads that you see today. Um, you know, what, what is it that's the main thing that's lacking for them? Is it, is it their motivation? They just don't feel like doing something. Is it their mindset? Is it their exercise? Is it their nutrition? What, what is it? Um, so all those things are critical, you know, exercise and nutrition. Absolutely. Um, but the one thing I see the most is guilt. You know, uh, men are so busy, caught up trying to you know build the best life they can for their family, working, you know, one, two, three jobs, whatever the case is. Um, provide for their family and things like that, um, that they feel guilty taking time for themselves. Uh, but what they don't realize is if they feel, t you know, they fail to take care of themselves sooner or later, they're not going to be able to take care of the people that depend on them. Uh, so I try to get through to guys that, you know, you have to take care of yourself. You have to give yourself that self care uh, or you're not going to be able to take care of the people that you truly care about the most. Wow. So it's guilt. Yep. Yeah. Many men just feel, you know, they feel guilty if they take time to go to the gym or take time to go, you know, get a run in or get a workout in. Uh, they feel guilty for taking time for themselves, you know, and a lot, there's definitely motivation, uh, you know, is a factor for many guys as well. But a lot of times guys just feel guilty. They feel guilty spending money on themselves uh, to invest in a coach or, or learning, you know, the time it takes to learn or, or like, the, like I said, a time to exercise, you know, they feel guilty about doing those things and then they neglect them. Yeah. You know, I was talking to somebody before too, um, a previous guest that I had on Michael Ashford, and he was mentioning something very similar to what you're saying. It's basically, you know, these people saying that there's this quote unquote noble cause of not working out so I can dedicate the time to my family 
And it sounds good in theory, but it's actually really BS because you, you know, I've always said that you can only give what you have, mm -hmm. right? So if you don't have enough to give, then how, how well is that time that you are spending with your family or are you limited in the things that you're able to do? Um, yeah. So if they're, if they're just hiding behind this guilt and that's, that's huge. Yeah. So what do you, so what do you say to somebody like that? What, what, what's, what's something that you would say to your clients or, or someone that you come across that uses that as an excuse or a reason to not take care of themselves? How do you get through to them? Well, you know, I like that you said excuse because, uh, you know, a lot of times that's what it honestly is. It's men are afraid to take control of their health and fitness. So they use it as an excuse, use their family as a, a crutch to avoid that reality. Um, mm -hmm. But the truth is you can't, like you said, you can't pour from an empty cup, you know. And, you know, you mentioned that time with the family. You feel guilty for taking time with the fam, taking time away from the family. But if you fail to take care of your health and fitness, either one, you're going to compromise the quality of time you have with the family because you're going to be limited in the things you can do due to your physical condition. Or even worse, you're going to ultimately compromise your time here, period, as you run into major health issues such as a heart attack, as I mentioned earlier. You know, so you have to take care of yourself if you want to have time with the family. One, to maximize the time you do have with them. And two, to increase the overall time that you likely have here on the earth to be with them. Yeah. I mean, and you know, why can't you create a win-win too? Because, you know, how, how hard is it to go out and, you know, run around and kick the soccer ball around? Because we're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about having to, you know, go, go to the gym necessarily like five days a week and get your exercise in that way or get your movement in that way, right? I mean, you can go to the gym, you know, three days a week or something like that and get your strength training in, but then you can run around and do things with the family or get everybody involved. I mean, you could do, go for hikes depending on where you live, right? You go, go to the park and go for walks or bike rides or something like that. I mean, at least you're getting exercise in. And I feel like the benefits are going to far outweigh the perceived, you know, guilt, right? Because yeah. I mean, and then you're also setting an example, right? So you didn't have that example, as we said, but imagine if you did have that example and then, you know, how much easier it would have been for you to just, kind of flow with that lifestyle and just adopt it so much easier into your own family that you have now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I actually just read a, a study recently, I believe it was Na National Institute of Health. Uh, they said that, you know, if a child has uh, one obese parent, they're 50% more likely to be obese. If they have two obese parents, they're 80% more likely. Um, so the fact that I didn't necessarily end up like my parents is just, uh, you know, a fluke coincidence in the sense that, you know, statistically, that should have been the case. Right. Um, so you set that example you know, if you truly care about your kids, then you need to set the example, uh, you know, by your actions and your behavior uh, to help them live the life, to, you know, the best they can and avoid health issues, you know, type 2 diabetes and all the other chronic health issues that come along with being overweight or obese. Not only health issues, uh, but the kids can run into things such as bullying and, and other social uh, issues as well. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, because, I mean, then you look at, you know, all the the good that it does on the hormones and the, the hormonal system and the chemicals in our body and stuff like that, you know, how good exercise can be. So, you know, you're exercising, you're most likely happy and you're not having somebody, you know, who's negative and down all the time and all that stuff. Cause they got the endorphins going and especially with nutrition, right? I mean, most of the serotonin we make is in our digestive system. Yep. Yeah. I mean, if people get into the habit of uh, not taking care of themselves, they tend not to feel good about themselves. And then that permeates through other areas of your life. You know, if you don't feel good about yourself, you're not happy, you don't feel strong and capable. Uh, that's going to, you know, come out when you're spending time with your family, you know, you're going to maybe be more aggressive or depressed or just generally unhappy, you know, so you got to be happy with who you are, you know, if you want to be happy around those that you love. Mm -hmm. And you know, another good example, you and I were talking before we kind of went live with this is that, um, you're doing it now too, but we were talking about jujitsu and you're doing jujitsu now too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, initially, like I said, you know, fitness for me was just kind of looking good and, and, you know, kind of more aesthetics and ego. Um, but like I said, having a family now, not only do I want to be physically capable um, of doing things, but I want to have those skills to protect them if I need to as well. Absolutely. You know, and that's definitely something I resonate with too. Um, Cause my son and I are now doing it as well. And <laughs> I mean, as you already know, that's, that's pretty physically demanding. I mean, that's a workout, you know, and it's probably, I mean, I've seen your videos, you know, what you do online, jujitsu is way different as far as physic, you know, the physicality that's needed to be able to last. I mean, I don't know how your gym does it, but we do like five 
three or four minute rounds or something like that, where it's just, you know, you're just go. And then you got about 20 seconds to recover and then you're just in it with the next partner. And that takes a lot. I mean, there's a lot of conditioning that needs to be done to, uh, to keep up. Yeah. It's a, it's a major different stimulus and exposure than, you know, say doing a set and resting one or two minutes and then repeating it. You know, when I first went in there, uh, you know, of course, like everyone that probably goes, I thought, oh, I'm in, you know, I'm in good shape. Like, look at this guy. He's, you know, way significantly less than me. This is nothing. <laughs> and then within minutes, I'm like, holy crap. Like, what did I, you know, you realize that you're not as in good of shape as you think you are. And, you know, your ability to lift weights is, is going to help in some cases. But, you know, there's a lot of skill involved and it humbles you very, very quickly. Yeah. I actually just put a picture up on my, on my Instagram feed or my story uh, yesterday. And it's, I don't know how often you listen to, uh, I was listening to the episode with Jocko and Tim Kennedy and they were saying it's like two hours long, but I, it took me three days, I think, to finish the whole thing. But it said, uh, get humble or get humbled. <laughs> and Tim Kennedy was like, yes, I want to turn that into a t-shirt. So he was, he was absolutely loving it. Um, I don't know if he ever did. I, I haven't seen the t-shirt yet, but, um. I actually put that because I took a nice picture of the mats at the at the Jiu Jitsu studio, and it's true. I mean, you do have to stay humble, and I'm really there to learn, and I'm not there to be an asshole to anybody. Um, you know, so I I'm actually kind of like, you know, am I giving you enough pressure? Am I giving you too much pressure? Like, I don't I don't continually ask, uh, especially if I've worked with a person before. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, I had to go up against a couple a couple of women yesterday, and you know, I just you know I don't want to take it easy on them because I don't want to. Um, take away anything from their reps that they're getting in um but at the same time i don't want to be you know the jerk being the new guy in the class too so yeah but man it is physically demanding but i really like that i mean because we were thinking about doing like some kind of baseball for my son in the fall now but i'm like you know what i mean and nothing against baseball right but you're getting stronger at jujitsu right you're getting a lot of exercise you're not getting exercise by standing in the outfield and the amount of running around that they do I mean, they do more running around their warmups than they do, you know, actually in the field or whatever position they're playing. So he's learning a skill that could help to protect him. He's gaining confidence. He's exercising. He's getting stronger physically. I mean, I, I just think jujitsu is such a great way to do that. You know, what I mean, it's yeah, such it's, a great art. Yeah, it's 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 a major difference between you know general sports like you mentioned baseball and football. Not to take anything away from those, and you can um, you can gain a great a great deal of a great deal of uh, fitness and capabilities from them. You know, my wife and I have the same conversation. She actually grew up as a three sport athlete and Division one collegiate athlete, um, and we have a oh, son. Wow. Yeah, we have a son and uh, I always tell her like the first thing I'm going to get him into is going to be jujitsu. And, you know, the reason for that is, is like, you know, you can learn a sport and be in good shape and be active and be healthy. uh, But jujitsu is not only going to help you do those things, but it's going to provide you a life skill that you can take with you, you know, for the rest of your life. Um, And I wish I honestly would have gotten into it earlier myself. I go against guys now. uh, I went against a guy last night who was like, you know, maybe 20 years old and he just totally decimated me. Uh, much smaller than me, you know, not, not as strong as I am, but he, he's been doing it a very long time, and, and I felt totally helpless against him. Dude, I went up against a 15-year-old and got my ass whooped. Yep. 15-year-old kid. He's been doing it <laughs> since he was nine, six years. Yeah. He is so good. And you know what? He took it easy on me because I saw him go up against a guy that's been in the class for probably about almost a year now, mm-hmm. and he's bigger and stronger than me. And I watched them two go at it. And I'm like, there's no way this dude gave it gave it his all because he knew it was only like my fifth class. He dominated that guy. I mean, this guy, the, the, the kid that I that I'm talking about is probably the bigger guy. He's probably about six two, maybe six one, because I'm like five eleven. So he's probably like six one, six two, and he's probably got about I'm two oh five right now, and he's got to have like at least twenty pounds on me, maybe thirty. Wow. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, you know, be humble or get humbled. And that's actually what happened to me when I first um, kind of dove into jujitsu. I went in there, like I said, you know, thinking I was bigger and stronger than most of the guys. Mm-hmm. I, was, I would refuse to tap, you know, when I would get caught in things and I ended up getting hurt due to you know my ego. Uh, so I got humbled and then I re- recollected from there and I still saw the value in it. You know, I definitely still want to be a part of it. So after coming back off of an injury now, when I went back, you know, I'm much quicker to tap. I'm much quicker to ask for advice and learn rather than just going in there and trying to, you know, uh, feed my own ego and, and ultimately just end up getting hurt and, and tapped out anyways. That's awesome. How long have you been doing it now? 
Uh, so it's been a little bit over a year. Uh, I did take a little bit of time off, like I said, because I got hurt there. But now I've been back into it for uh, several months now and, and really enjoying it. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm still like literally on my like, I think tomorrow's going to be like my ninth class or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I've been doing two two times a week, you know, and uh, it's it's good because my son's got class the exact same time that I do. So I can go on the one side of the mats and he's on the other side. And he gets to do his thing. So we get to do it at the exact same time, but just, you know, adult class, kids class. So it works out really, really great. Nice. Yeah. That was another reason I wound up doing. Yeah. I was going to say having the schedule like that helps a ton because you're not there for, you know, maybe two, three hours with classes at different times and you guys are at the same time. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I know a couple other people that do it and they're like, oh my gosh, I wish I had that type of schedule where I wish my, you know, studio would do the same thing. So, um, that's awesome. So what else are some things besides the jujitsu? What are also some things that you do to keep yourself on your program? Um, right. And so it's just also not, so it's, I want to hear the exercise part, but it's like, what are those time? What are those things that you do to make sure like in other areas of your life too? So your nutrition, your sleep, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, exercise is a piece of it. Of course, you know, I, I've been training, you know, five days a week minimum for a decade now. Um, but, you know, having a family now, things have changed a bit, you know, so sleep uh, comes at a premium sometimes. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I don't always get the rest that I want to get. But I, what I do is I wake up at the same time every day. Uh, and that's a Which major, is what? I wake up at four o'clock every day. Um, so that's a major factor of just maintaining that habit, you know, so no matter how I'm feeling or whatever's going on, I don't give myself the opportunity to make excuses and get out of it. Um, you know, on the nutrition side, I do things such as uh, prep, you know, a bunch of food in advance, you know, for the coming week. Uh, that way I don't find myself slipping into as many bad nutritional choices. Um, so those are some of the things I do to, uh, you know, solidify the good habits. And like I said, you know, once you start doing it, it just becomes part of your lifestyle. Like the idea to me of not being active and exercising uh, just doesn't compute. And not only the exercise, but like I'm really active with my kids. We always go to the park, run around, climb around, uh, play games like that. So, you know, that's what I do to try to stay active. And what time do you get to bed? Uh, usually between 10 and 11 o'clock at night. Uh, my wife likes to try to keep me up hanging out, uh, you know, watching some shows <laughs> once in a while. So, but I, half the time I'll end up crashing on the couch because I'm just tired from being up so early. Uh, right. but, <laughs> so that's kind of how it goes. So will you not, um, will you, so you won't allow yourself to sleep in past four o'clock, even if you are feeling a little bit more tired or run down? Uh, no, every once in a while, you know, I'll know that like I need to rest, um, you know, just to give my body a chance to recover. But most days, you know, I get up at four o'clock, even on the weekend, you know, and if I'm not going to go to the gym uh, first thing in the morning, I'll get up and I'll use that time to read or study or do something else productive. Nice. And how about the weekends? Same thing? Yeah, same thing, man. Uh, so weekend, same thing. I get up at that time. And if I'm wife, for example, you know, we got to wait till the kids area opens up around nine. Uh, so I'll get up and study for some professional development or personal reading, you know, personal growth, things like that. So I just use that time, you know, in a different direction to, to still grow. Nice. And what's your nutrition like? Uh, so for me, typically, you know, I've, I've been in the past, you know, focused more on stacks. So I have tracked food and all that, but I don't find myself doing that as much. I just try to get, you know, ample amount of protein, uh, eat as many vegetables as I can. You know, I, I do have quite a bit of carbohydrates, you know, in terms of white rice and potatoes and things like that. But that's just because, you know, to my le- activity level, you know, I have a pretty high metabolism. Um, so I try to avoid, you know, poor nutritional uh, choices, you know, but I, I definitely don't keep myself from going out and enjoying ice cream with the kids or pizza or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so you got to have that sustainable uh, balance. Otherwise, you're just going to, you know, cave and, and kind of slip back to bad habits. Yeah. Now, if any, do you have those days where you just, you don't want to do anything? You're just kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, I just want to, I don't feel like working out today or I don't feel like staying on my diet plan or anything like that. And and if you do, how do, how do you let it affect you? Uh, I definitely have those days. I think it's kind of human nature to have those days. Some days you're feeling great. Some days you're not. But like I said, you know, kind of solidifying that habit of waking up at a particular time and kind of getting it done every day. Uh, Even when I feel that way, you know, I'll go, even if it's just kind of going through emotions as bad as that sounds, you know, it sustains that habit so that the next day when I feel good again, or, you know, my mentality is back where it needs to be, I'm just right back in the saddle of everything. Um, So like I said, I don't, I don't, you know, I try not to give myself excuses of way and ways of getting out of things. Like even if I'm 
griping in the evening, you know, telling my wife, Hey, I'm really going to take tomorrow off. She knows that it's not going to happen. Um, cause I just don't do that. <laughs> and every once in a while, you know, maybe I do to give my body a rest just so I don't get hurt. But you know, I don't go if, if, if I'm feeling fine, you know, physically, I'm going to go whether men- mentally I'm there or not. Right. So you do, so you'll say that you're not going to go, but she knows it's BS and you'll just wind up going anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She always, I say, yeah, I'm going to give myself a day off. And then she's like, yeah, okay. You know, cause she already knows it's not going to happen the next day. You know, I'm going to be right back at it doing the same thing I'm always doing. And how long have you been doing that for? Like what, 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 um, what instilled that in you? What, what made you start getting up at four o'clock in the morning? Like what, what brought, like, have you always been like that ever since you've been with her, with her, with your wife or like, what, when did that start? So I've always been a morning person, but not to that extreme. You know, once we started having kids, you know, going back to the topic of guilt, you know, uh, and taking time away from the kids, I realized that one way to avoid taking away from time from the kids is to get up earlier and get stuff done before they're awake. You know, so I, it's very common for me to get up and, and go work out at four thirty, five o'clock in the morning um, and then be back before they're even awake. And then there's no guilt associated with that. I got it done before they even woke up. I didn't take any time away from mm-hmm. them. And, you know, so it, it didn't have any negative impact. And if anything, I feel great by the time they wait, awake, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go and have a great day with them. Yeah. So, so when did you start the four o'clock thing when you, when you had kids? Oh yeah. Yeah. About that. You know, I'd say about that time, you know, it's been uh, definitely several years now at this point, you know, um, I, I see on Facebook sometimes like, you know, from two years ago, a picture of my watch from four o'clock will pop up. Um, but you mentioned Jocko earlier, that kind of definitely played a part. You know, I've always, like I said, been a morning person, but then I realized that uh, I'm not quite the morning person I thought I was. <laughs> yeah. So I took it a little bit further and decided to get up a little bit earlier. And like I said, I use it, you know, either for fitness or for personal development or professional uh, pursuits, things like that. So I just try to maximize that time, you know, because I know when when they're awake, either I have to take time away from them or there's just not going to be that time to, to do some of the things that I'm personally interested in doing. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's huge. I mean, well, one, you're having the discipline, right? So you're working out your mind at that point, right? Because you're keeping, you're keeping the routine and you're keeping yourself on that right track. And then, yeah, you're completely taking away that guilt. And if that's something that you're finding in a lot of other guys too, then that's a great takeaway for them, you know, for whoever's listening to this. If they are resonating with that guilt, then maybe they just need to get up and start getting at it a little bit sooner. Right. You, you remove that excuse, you know, from the equation. And then really at the end of the day, it comes down to how bad do you want it? You know, do you really want to make a change? Do you really want to emphasize your health and nutrition? Or do you just want to continue to use the family as an excuse, which you can easily sidestep, as I mentioned, by waking up earlier. Right. And it doesn't have to be in the morning, you know, some guys, you know, maybe just the evening works better, but a lot of guys will say, I'm not a morning person or whatever. Like the reality is you're, you're whatever kind of person you want to be. Uh, you know, so whoever you want to be and the type of person you want to be, go out and implement those behaviors and habits to make you uh, become the person you want to be. Yeah. And, and, you know, it might not just, you might not adjust right away. Cause I remember, you know, throughout my whole time exercising, I never worked out first thing in the morning, right. All through college and even after college, and it would always be an after work type thing or after class type thing, or maybe in the middle of the day, but I at least had like one or two meals in me and I was already up and up and after it for a while. But then I started to change my whole routine and I would get up at five 30 in the morning and I would go downstairs and I would work out. And this was when I was overweight. So I was, you know, at my heaviest, I was like two twenty, but like a, a heavier two twenty, you know? And, mm-hmm. um, and I would go downstairs five 30 in the morning or I'll go out back. Cause it was like a playground out back in the, in the school schoolyard, not too far. And then I would, you know, do my exercises there of course, because before any of the kids were on the playground, because I didn't look like that creepy guy <laughs> working out with kids <laughs> running around. And um, so, you know, but I, I noticed it wasn't like right away, but my body adapted, I adjusted. And then I thought I wasn't able to work out first thing in the morning, and especially on an empty stomach, but my body adapted and changed. And then it was perfectly natural for me to do that. So yeah, I totally agree. And I actually don't agree with trying to work out after work or like later, you know, when, once the kids go to bed, I don't think that's a really good time. You're like, oh, I'll work out at eight thirty, nine o'clock because then you're kind of throwing off your sleep cycle, you know? And if you, if you look at your cortisol and your melatonin rhythms and how, you know, your melatonin should actually be pretty high around nine o'clock or at least getting to that point where it's pretty high. Cause you know, roughly we should be, you know, getting to sleep around 10, 10 30, the science shows, uh, because of our cortisol and melatonin rhythms. Well, if you just start working out and you increase your cortisol levels, that's going to slam your melatonin levels down 
and now you're probably not going to get that rest and recovery that you need. So it's probably better to go bed a little bit earlier and then get up, get up earlier. Like you're saying. Yeah. I almost never advocate for guys to do it in the evening. Um, you know, just some guys will say that's the only time and I'll say, okay, well, if that's the case then go ahead. But you know, I almost always advocate for getting it done earlier, not just for the reasons that the physiological reasons that you point out, but for behavior, behavioral purposes. Uh, in my experience, when guys say, oh, I'll just do it at, you know, whatever time at night, they almost never do it because then you're home, you know, you're in your kind of rhythm of relaxing with the family and it just never ends up getting done. Right. So if you get up and get it done first thing in the morning, you know, it's done. You don't have an, the ability to make an excuse to kind of put it off later in the day. Absolutely. Awesome. Man, this was great. I love this. Um, all right. And so where can people learn more about you and what you have to offer and, and follow you on social media and all that stuff? Yeah. So there's uh, quite a few places, you know, I have a, a Instagram account account uh, named the, the driven dad, uh, the driven dad, sorry. Uh, and then a Facebook group named exactly the same, which we have over a thousand guys now that are on there actively, you know, pursuing health and fitness and trying to make either changes to improve their health or just sustain those and, and being part of a like, uh, like-minded group of men that are doing the same. Uh, then if you also go to thedrivendad.com, I have an eight-week uh, health and fitness boot camp that I run with a friend of mine named Dr. Adrian Chavez. And what we do there is we put guys through kind of an eight-week, uh, uh, we'll do an assessment of basically their current nutritional habits, lifestyle, their physical condition, and then we'll come up with a uh, customized approach nutritionally and exercise-wise that's tailored to them. Uh, to help them get them on the right track and make those changes they want to make and, you know, kind of heading towards that uh, lifestyle of health and vitality that they want to achieve. Awesome. Sounds great, man. So it's the driven com, and then at the driven dad on social media. Yes, sir. That's correct. So that'll be the Facebook group. That'll be the name of the Instagram account. And then same for the website. Nice. Really simple. <laughs> All yeah, right, Chris. Yeah. So um, as with every episode, we end with 10 questions uh, for the guest inspired by James Lipton and Bernard Pouveau. So yeah, I know you already had those questions, so I know you're probably well prepared. So first question, who is your hero? Um, so for me, like I mentioned, I don't have many heroes growing up, but what I do is I take motivation and inspiration from individuals. Like you mentioned earlier, Jocko, Tim Kennedy, I find men that uh, are how I want to be and have characteristics that I want to have, and I try to emulate them the best I can. Nice. What excites you? Uh, the idea that, you know, the pursuit of growth and knowing that I'm in control of who I become. Nice. What turns you off? Excuses. I don't like people who refuse to take accountability for things and are just kind of generally complacent. What is your favorite sound? My kid's laughter. What is your least favorite sound? My kid's whining. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite quote or saying? Uh, one of my favorites is uh, don't be upset with the results you didn't get from the work you didn't do. I like that. I don't think I've ever heard that before. In a couple words, what should a dad be? I would say uh, strong, reliable, a good example, loving, and present. I like present. In a couple words, what should a dad not be? Basically the opposite of that, absent, complacent, and unreliable. If you could try any other profession, what would it be? I'd have to say a fighter pilot, you know, uh, being in the Air Force and then now living near an air base, just seeing the jets flying by. Nice. And what would you like to be remembered for? Uh, I'd like to be some uh, remembered for being someone that had integrity and a character, you know, worth respecting. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Chris, thank you so much. I thought this was, a, this was great. I got a lot out of this. Um, if anybody listening wants to learn more about Chris, Go to thedrivendad.com for the eight-week program. Follow him on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, check out the check out the online group at the Driven Dad. D R I V E N D A D. The Driven Dad. So, Chris, thanks so much for for hopping on the show today. I really appreciate it, man. Definitely, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the chat. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Warrior Dads podcast. If you like this podcast and want to support it, please subscribe, leave comments, and share it with someone you think would benefit from listening as well. Thanks again, and keep on being a warrior dad.